Well, hello there. My name is Angus and welcome to Maker's Muse. Now guys, I want to apologize for taking so long to get a new video out, but as you can see, I'm in my brand new studio. So there will be a bit of echo. I do apologize for that. And the lighting is not perfect, but I figure it's best to get it all up and running as fast as I can to get a new video out to you guys. And this topic is something I actually wanted to do before the end of the year, but we're a few days into the new year, but I figure it's such a good topic, I'd do it anyway. And what we're going to be talking about is why there's never been a better time to get into 3D printing, but running through all the awesome things we've seen in 2016, and the things I'm gonna predict will happen in 2017 in the wonderful world of 3D printing. Let's get started. Ah, welcome back guys. So as I said, 2016 saw a huge change in the 3D printing space. Now, it's been a while since the 3D printing hype bubble has burst, let's be honest. But in terms of actual usefulness of 3D printers, costs of things and all of that, we saw a massive shift in 2016. And I want to go through some key points that in my opinion, make now a fantastic time to get into 3D printing if you've been sitting on the fence. Starting off with the machines themselves. Ready to run 3D printers are now cheaper than ever. We have seen a humongous shift, mostly driven through Kickstarter projects of 3D printers that have been dropping and dropping and dropping in price. Now this does have a positive and negative consequence. The positive is that more people can afford 3D printers. And a fantastic example is this thing right here. This is the Cetus produced by Tier Time. I reviewed it at the end of 2016. So this machine is a ready to run printer for around 300, 350 US dollars, which is ridiculous considering that previously you'd have to spend a lot more money to get a machine that actually worked out of the box. Now, as I said, 2016 was the year of the Kickstarter 3D printing projects. We had the Trinus, the Cetus, we had the M3D Pro, and we had the Tico start rolling out as well. So these are all machines that were founded on Kickstarter, which is fantastic because these machines all have a very low price point. But it's not all positive. 2016 also saw some massive Kickstarter failures. Machines such as the iBox Nano and Cobblebot were pretty much disasters, but then we had the Peachy printer failure, and that one shocked everyone. A 3D printing Kickstarter project where the funds had been used to build a house. What the hell? I can't believe nothing happened from that. They just said, sorry, the money's gone and here's a confession. So that's the problem with Kickstarter. And in 2016, I did do a lot of Kickstarter project reviews like the one we saw of the, the Olo or Ono, we still yet to see what happens with that project. But in 2017, I'm not going to do that anymore. I don't want to uh, review a project online that, tends, that turns out to be a scam and then you guys get stuffed over. What I will do, however, if a manufacturer wants to send me a pre-production unit, I'll check that out, but I'll make it very clear that this unit was sent to me before the actual production run of a campaign. 3D design software has also now become more accessible than ever. Starting with Tinkercad, which has been around for a few years now, but now that is free, it's owned by Autodesk, and it's accessible by anyone all over, all over the world. You don't even need a powerful computer, it runs on the cloud. And Tinkercad is designed for primary school kids. I've seen eight year olds use Tinkercad, and they pick it up like that. We also have professional level CAD solutions now that are also free of charge to hobbyists and students such as Onshape or Fusion 360. Onshape does have a free mode, but it's still nah. But Fusion 360 is completely free if you're a startup or a student. And also if you are a student, you have access to all of Autodesk's other more professional tools like Autodesk Inventor. And these are awesomely powerful parametric modeling solutions. You don't need to be spending any money to get software like SolidWorks, like you would have had to do a few years ago. And also there's new ones like Vectory, which is a cloud-based freeform modeler, something that's very cool we've never seen before. And then you have the amazing open source solutions that we've seen for quite a while, such as Blender, Wings 3D, and FreeCAD. These are all open source, very powerful CAD solutions, and they're available to anyone all around the world. So yeah, the time of SketchUp has kind of been and gone quite a while ago when it comes to designing for 3D printing. Then there's the filaments. Oh, is there filaments? In 2016, the filament market for 3D printing absolutely exploded. We saw more companies come online with new blends and colors and properties than we've ever seen before. In fact, I cannot keep track anymore of the filament types 
and properties and companies out there in the world right now. There is so many, which is fantastic for consumers because the price of filaments has dropped substantially while the quality is still quite good. You can get a decent PLA, very cheap now, that will print perfectly. I know a lot of my friends in America like Hatchbox. I personally like eSun or even Hobby King's own house brand PLA has just worked perfectly for me. And these are extremely cheap filaments. Also, there's a lot of specialty filaments now, metal filled of all kinds. We have carbon fiber filled materials like nylons that are extremely strong. And now we have new blends of materials that are designed for support that will break away or they'll dissolve away in certain liquids. And I think that we're gonna to continue to see more and more specialty filaments be developed as 2017 rolls along. It's actually really interesting to see how out of date my PLA versus ABS 101 video I did maybe two years or so ago actually is now because there are so many different materials available to the hobbyist for 3D printing rather than back then it was just PLA or ABS. It's changed so much that I really probably should redo that video sometime soon. And finally, in 2016, we saw an explosion of free educational resources for 3D printing. Now, here on Makers Muse, I try to make trusted reviews, tips and tricks, and projects in 3D printing available to anyone all around the world using the YouTube platform. That's just one facet of it. We have very active 3D printing groups on Facebook, forums all around the world, and even physical meetups like the one I attended in Perth at the end of 2016. And these resources are extremely valuable. You don't need to go do a 3D printing course at a university or anything like that. You can learn so much from the hobbyists who have been doing this for years and years and years. So if you wanna pick up something, be inspired, be curious, and come along to these meetups. Watch my videos, watch other people's videos on YouTube. There's so many 3D printing YouTube channels now. I'll put a link in the description to a like massive list of them, like Joel 3D Printing Nerd and Chuck Hellebutt release Filament Fridays, just to name two of them. Very, very good 3D printing channels. So that's the state of play now at the start of 2017. But what I wanna talk about now is my predictions for the rest of 2017 in the world of consumer FDM 3D printing. Firstly, I need to address the glut of 3D printers and filament manufacturers in the world today. And what I think we're going to see is a few of them die out. Now, it's, it's sad to say, but although it's great for a consumer to have this much choice, I believe there's too many companies out there for the market size that currently exists. So I think we're gonna to start to see some of them, especially the, the smaller resellers that don't actually bring anything to the table with their own brands or anything like that, they're gonna to start to disappear in my opinion, which is sad to say, but that's one of my predictions. Also one of the more negative predictions is the race to the bottom we have been seeing. As I said, ready to run kits like the Cetus are fantastic machines, but of course there's always cheaper. And China is pumping out cheap, low quality kits that have zero safety considerations. So we started to see that in 2016 with very, very cheap kits that you can buy with mains wiring exposed and all heating uh, safety features like thermal runaway dis um, sensing disabled. So these machines literally can go up and fire or electrocute you if you don't do them, don't put them together properly. That's gonna continue, unfortunately, in my opinion, and I would hate to see an accident, but if you're watching this video now, please don't spring for the cheapest of the cheap kits. I'm actually gonna do a review on one of those very shortly. Go for something a little bit more expensive from a reputable brand, such as the Prusa i3, the genuine uh, original Prusa i3, or a small, decent machine like the Cetus or the Trinus. Machines that have actually already been tested and you can find a community around them where people say they're actually pretty good without having to do tons of mods to them. We're gonna to see tons more Kickstarter 3D printing projects rather than their machines or filaments or uh, accessories to 3D printers. As I said, Kickstarter just seems to be wildly popular for some reason. People love the idea of it, but there's definitely gonna be more failures. So always do your research and never back something with money you can't afford to lose because I mean, I'm still waiting for the Bevel. They just updated their campaign, and I backed that ages ago, started 2015, and I haven't seen that yet. And I think the 101 Hero, which I did back as a bit of a joke, that may well never arrive to me as well. They seem to be having issues. So Kickstarter projects are very hit and miss. You're more likely than not not to get a product that you want or not to get a product at all. So be very careful with those projects. But as I said, they're gonna remain hugely popular just because Kickstarter. But on a more positive note, I believe 2017 will be the year that multi-material 3D printing for desktop machines makes a comeback. You used to see the, like the MakerBot 2X with dual nozzles 
but they never really worked properly. We're gonna see that change. We already started to see it with the Ultimaker 3, which does dual extrusion printing amazingly well with soluble supports as well, which is very cool. We're gonna see a comeback of that with new material technologies and new hardware technologies coming together in 2017 to make machines that actually do soluble support properly and do dual extrusion very nicely without you know, having to do all sorts of hacks, like have ooze shields and stuff. We're gonna see more of that. I'm really, really excited to see what 2017 brings in that regard. And on a personal note, I believe ABS will fade into obscurity. So ABS was one of those plastics people thought, okay, it's used for injection molding, we'll start using it for 3D printing. And it does have its strength. It is a very tough plastic for a lot of applications, but as I said, new blends of even tougher plastics like nylons and polycarbonates have started to come out and they're actually just as easily printable on a machine that can print ABS. So I believe ABS itself will actually start to become less common, although it's great for acetone vapor smoothing. If you saw Joel Telling's uh, recent stream on the polisher from Polymaker, there's even new filaments that can smooth safely using ethanol rather than uh, acetone which is a lot more not more flammable so i believe abs will become so uh less less and less popular that it will actually sort of pretty much fade off and companies will even stop saying they support it and we'll start seeing materials like petg and on the higher end polycarbonates and nylons take over where abs left off so thank you so much for watching guys hope you enjoyed this first video in our new studio as i said sorry about the reverb and the lighting will change but hope you enjoyed this look back on what we saw in 2016 for 3D printing and why there's never been a better time to get into 3D printing if you've been sitting on the fence and also look forwards into the rest of this year, 2017, to see what we might see, uh, to predict what we might see in the 3D printing space. And I would love to hear your thoughts on what we might see in 2017 in consumer 3D printing. Let me know in the comments. I would absolutely love to see it. I will absolutely read every comment and I'll a reply if I can. So thank you so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video on Makers Muse and want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks and reviews, it would help us out a huge amount if you hit that subscribe button. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later guys. Bye.